Singapore is a funny month, isn't it? Yesterday, I thought we were in the home and dry, in the clear for summer. <laughs> well, you can see. It's been a fascinating week or so for me with the project, trying to recalibrate it after last week's video where I did all the unboxing and talked about sort of getting a bit more network focused. I actually went round on Monday and looked at five different woodland sites uh, with the woodsman. And it's so interesting, a year ago when I first arrived, or 18 months ago when I first arrived here at the estate, I had no idea what I was looking for in Woodland. You know, I just had to trust his opinion. But now I know so much about exactly what makes a really special bit of Woodland. That actually makes it much harder in many ways because I know what I want to avoid. And we're still figuring out, still workshopping exactly what the next best step is. But I do get excited when I think about going back to the woodland and also the massive hut that we were building all of last year. Now we're realizing, okay, it's a bit difficult to move it. <laughs> it's not as easy to reproduce, it takes too long to build as the model for a Corco hut. But actually I think it can be a perfect social space if we go back to the woods, build a few pods around it for sleeping and have this as the central hub. I am sitting here with Andy, who has been helping to figure out how we can take the old Corcovado splash site um, into like a V2 version, which he's kind of w wiggling away on here somewhere on his machine. So we're trying to evolve it basically and try to show everything that is going on with the community. First met Andy through the Slack group, who you've been watching the videos for a while, haven't you? Uh, yeah, about a year. About a year. Your, your business is called Bee Digital as well, isn't it? You love the bees. Yeah, well, all about the bees. Yeah, just trying to uh, build a business around not just making things, but also having an impact on our environment. Planting loads of bee-friendly plants, working out ways we can encourage bees to, to come around, giving away plants if we can. Yeah. Uh, that kind of stuff. That's cool. When you're building a website, especially for the first time, it's a lot more than just some web pages and some content. It's quite a deep sort of formative process of trying to pull together absolutely everything you've been doing naturally. I wouldn't be able to figure it out without you. You're very welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> I want to show you a little clip of what he's done with these little bee ponds. Jill did it as well. Um, it's, a, it's a very cool little interaction. If you never saw a video I made about bees a couple of years ago, um, I'll stick in the link below because they are flipping important to making our whole ecosystem work. And just yesterday, actually, I was talking with Big Plant about whether we could get a little wild flower mix and sort of do a wild flower mix collaboration. Now we're thinking about the network, thinking about how do we get Corcovado into your lives, into all of our daily lives. Thinking about strength through diversity, these little things, little hacks can really help us do that. So what we're trying to do today is work out how we take all of these doodles and then make it look visually nice so that essentially we can celebrate all of the good stuff that is already happening and has happened in the Corcovado project because there really is so much I haven't really stopped to think about it but when I look at last year all the articles and podcasts that we collaborated with all the stuff we've created, the films, the handbook, the experiences, the retreats, the contributions, the visitors. There's so much stuff we've done. And I guess V2 now, quite simply, is trying to say, well, V1 was amazing. So how do we help other people replicate that? How do we help you to replicate that in your daily life? And the website needs to represent that. So people realize this is more than just one place, one hut in one wood, but there's actually a this modern hamlet of huts around the world is being connected through digital tools. That's the end of my ramble, I'm going back to my coffee. There's four bases, four nodes, if you will, in the network. But actually, there's six relationships. When you connect everybody together, there's more relationships than there are nodes. If there's three nodes, you get three nodes and you get three relationships. If you've got seven nodes, you actually end up with 21 relationships. So what that shows you is that every node you add, the level of complexity of relationships can go up inordinately. Now, if we're well structured, that can be a wonderful thing because we can build a very strong and diverse network. Kill, kill noodles. No. <laughs> hey, Josh. Hey, Jill. <laughs> yes, if we structure it... 
This is it's a bit challenging having a dog in the vlog. A nice dog, an excited dog. Noodles. Come here. What's wrong, hey? What's wrong? Come here. Yes, when you've got that level of complexity and loads of relationships, every new node you add adds a lot more relationships. So that's good if it's well structured and well ordered and good stuff is flow flowing through the network. But equally, if you've got bad stuff flowing through a densely connected network, that means that bad stuff flows extremely quickly. With technology moving forwards, and becoming more and more hyper-connected, it's much more important than ever that we work hard on making sure that the right connections are in the right places and the right stuff is flowing through those connections. So if you remember the little icons from the handbook, we're looking at the sun, the moon, the river, the earth, the hut, the deer, and the butterfly. And now what we're doing is linking those to the different stakeholders or the different parts of the Corcovado ecosystem. So, for example, Earth very much relates to landowners. We can't have huts in trees unless there's someone who has trees and is willing to put a hut in there. So that's one of the important stakeholders. These are the websites that I find quite inspiring. Airbnb, Workaway, Sofa Sounds, TEDx, School of Life. And all of these have a sense that they connect people to create experiences. Look at the complexity here. Airbnb is renters with people who want to rent. Workaway is getting people who want to work in a place to go and work with the person who has a place. Sofa Sounds is a bit more complicated because you've got the hosts who host the music nights, you've got the creators, the musicians, and then you've got the guests. We <laughs> have a much more complex network, but hopefully it means that what we will be able to create as a community is much richer and deeper and far more imaginative in how we can think about how we put this world together. And so it seems worth it, even though it looks complicated when we look at the board. Andy consults with people to help them develop websites in 24 hours, which is exactly what we need right now. So the idea is that by sitting here around Brenda's table for the next 24 hours, we'll end up with some kind of website that we can launch when the vlog goes out on Thursday. That's the idea, 9 p.m. Thursday. <coughs> amen, amen. Wow. We're using and leveraging as much social tech that's already out there as possible. Even on a philosophical level, my position is that the world is changing because this technology is moving so fast. We don't need to build more technology. That's not what's going to screw us, that we didn't build enough technology. What's going to screw us is that we didn't have a good enough story to understand and cope with what this technology is doing to change the world. So whether it's on a very practical level, like our website and how we manage and run it, or whether it's on thinking about how the whole world works. These days, I'm not into building tech anymore. I'm into using what's already there and trying to make the most of it and get our head around it. You'll be able to see the proof in the pudding going to corkovar.do when this vlog is out and you'll see what we did. Please do give us comments and feedback um, what you would like to see from the site. I mean, this is to try and represent the project in its best light. So if you think there is something in the project that you care about, that you think is important, that we haven't surfaced in the website, then we need to know. I've just been looking at the Patreon, and uh, a couple of months ago we moved from doing Patreon as a $1 per piece of content contribution to a monthly contribution. I did kind of screw myself a bit because what was a one dollar a content which was weekly has now become once a month <laughs> so where we were getting like 500 pounds a month into the project we're now getting about 100 pounds a month and also i think that there's a sense that the project has changed you know when it was just me just beginning in the woodland on my own the idea of putting a bit of money in and to get a clear product of the handbook made sense on Patreon. And I think Patreon works really, really, really well when your project is clearly small and it clearly needs both emotional support and financial support just to make the next bit, the next video, the next bit of content. And frankly, that's just not where we're at anymore with Corcovado. Now I'm trying to provide the tools to help generate a network. I need people who want to commit to the process. And if anything, 
I want people to support on Patreon, those people within the network that are doing things on the ground, like Jack's Patch, who we saw last week, he should have a Patreon and you guys should support that because he is the guy on the ground trying to do something hard and interesting for the first time. So I think that it's about time that we decide to pull the plug on the Patreon. Now everybody that has supported so far in V2 will get all of the rewards that we talked about on the Patreon. It's just time to be real about the fact that the project is changing. My personal solitary journey is over and now I am trying to provide the glue between everybody else that is doing those cool little journeys and I need a different kind of support to make that happen. So if you guys did support me on the Patreon last year and have begun to this year, I literally can't thank you enough. It made all the difference to know that people didn't just want to watch but they wanted to get inside and be a part of the project. It really is an incredible tool for doing that. If you've got any questions, ping them an email or leave them below and we can answer them as well. Check out this animation that somebody did, sketching out something they want to do with the huts. Huh? Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. I'll need some philosophy. Yeah. I'm get dig me a Dave shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's only right after you didn't tell me that I had been filming up close and personal on my face. Some amazing content. I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> At two thirty in the afternoon, are we winning or are we losing? Uh, yeah, we're winning. Yeah. Winning. Boom, boom, this boom. The front. Let me use the wheel. Down here, yeah, that's broken. But I'll fix that. <laughs> also, go follow at Corco Creators on Twitter and Instagram. Honey has been running those accounts for a while now. I guess one of the big part of V two now that we've got focused is this whole concept of Corcovado at home. What does it mean to create a Corcovado corner? a little spot of Corcovado, a little space that helps you get into that Corcovado state of mind. I can't believe we're actually getting there in one day. And the weather has even perked up. It's alive. Right, this might not be the funnest vlog we've ever made, but we are crushing it today. We are getting all this stuff done that is way overdue. So you know we're doing the four hut building workshops throughout Europe at the four sort of flagship bases. The first one is going to be in Wiston on the 4th of June, right here at Brenda's table. We are just releasing four tickets. So to begin with, we're just going to make one night. Mmm. So I have just made live a four day, four night workshop on Eventbrite. There are four tickets and the cost is 400 pounds for all of your food, all of your accommodation, and all of the learning and everything that goes into making the hut. Hopefully you'll meet some really cool, like-minded people. This is gonna be trying to absolutely smash uh, building a little two and a half meter cubed hut like the image I showed you last week in just a working week. Hopefully you'll learn loads of skills, gain loads of confidence, and then we can give you some Brackets at cost price if you want to go away and then build your own hut in your own home, in your own village, in your own woodland, wherever it may be. So I think it's going to be quite special. Obviously we're quite nervous because we haven't done this exact thing before. So we're hoping that a few quite capable people will come and join us. There's lots of costs involved. So we need to charge appropriately for the tickets and you should expect something quality when you come. Having said that, if you really, really want to come and you cannot afford the ticket please do send us an email and we will see what we can do there's always room to make things work whether it's in this event or another one i think it will be an amazing experience of learning and creativity of connecting with nature and other like-minded people so hopefully you guys will get amongst it get involved and we'll see you here in literally like a month it's a month from now so call your boss, get the time off work, and book the tickets. There's only four. And also, I'll be filming a vlog of the week, and we'll record around the open fire, kind of a reflection podcast on what we're learning from doing the first hut building workshop. So it should be an all-round, really, really fun, engaging week. 4pm, more or less confident, Andy? Uh, well, I'm playing the video at the moment, so I'm fairly confident. Hey! We're going to use Josh's proper camera and film a little... 
I'm gonna make a little promo video for these workshops through the summer, show people that we're serious about what we're doing. She's very excited. <laughs> shoot back to Surrey last night for something but I am back now at Brenda's. Went to the fountain for dinner and resting peacefully. Now we're on day two of the website hack and hopefully we'll have something to show by the time the vlog goes live. Also it seems that I am a songwriter who writes one song a year because last year I wrote a little track called Renaissance Rising and this morning in the car on the way back all my phones were dead and I started writing a song and I don't want to tell you too much about it, but I really am quite excited by it. A bit folky, a bit rocky, and very much from the heart. When a song sort of bubbles up, like I said, it happens very few and far between for me. Yeah, it's almost like the authentic, I don't know, it's like the, it's probably the most authentic thing I do that comes most from the heart. I guess poetry was like that, and that's disappeared for me now, really. I have written one poem this year. But yeah, the little bits of pure uh, art that pop up, they are the things I hold on to that help me hang everything else I'm doing off them. Check this out that we got sent via the Alfinator. Brenda's Cottage has a stamp. Where's that permanent marker gone? Oh, here. Yeah. get one of these with for the new logo branding stuff that we're doing now I'm gonna come back to you English stamp company we want some more of these Josh has gone one level up on the recycling we've got all the plastics and papers in here and all the broken glass in here I don't know if he ever made his glass mash or if he just smashed it with an axe but it's about time we got a decent system for it So Andy and Jill travelled all the way from West Wales yeah. down to be here. Because we wanted to um, have safe seats for all the kids, we decided to get a minibus. We took out the middle row of seats and the back ones just fold down into the bed. Okay. Almost if there was a way to make like, Slack public yeah. and other people could see in, that would be quite nice because I think the community are building a lot of interesting points and interesting, they bring in links that people might not see and stuff like that. Yeah. Having an open Slack group, so you can just come in and right, yeah. join it wherever you like, but it is an extra step. And also, people can't see that it's active and what's being contributed well, without getting involved, even slightly. The Slack each week or something, someone's summarising everything that's going on. Yeah. I don't maybe that could be almost made, made public. Available. That's good. Um, because then it's just all the best bits, really. We're having a discussion about the nature of the conversation of Corcovado and how you do it and where you do it and what the different impacts are. And obviously when I'm making a vlog like this, it's me chatting a lot, very loudly, and then the volume of everybody else's voice is very small because it's just like comments and you have to, like whispers almost, and you have to go in and look carefully to see them. But that's not a very balanced or, or healthy conversation. It has its uses. And then we've got the Slack group, which is like for work and and not just for work, but for really thinking about what we can do together. But it feels like there's a gap in the middle. And I was thinking WhatsApp would be a good platform, but I've been getting told by these younger guys and this older guy <laughs> that it's just apparently my age group that likes using WhatsApp for uh, group messaging. We was thinking that maybe if we have a Facebook group, a community run Facebook group, a semi-safe, semi-public space where we can chat and maybe some of the produce of that can go into the there should be like a monthly roundup report coming from Slack and Facebook that gets published back to the website that sort of says, 
what the community has been generating in knowledge and experience um, completely outside of the vlogs and actually the stuff that gets generated there might be then what we end up then taking the vlog to go and amplify and highlight further. So basically trying to readdress the balance of the voice within the community. I am enjoying <laughs> Jill's little mobile work setup here. Got the internet. Is the internet hub coming off the solar panel? Yes, yeah. Is it working? Yeah. You're getting your Wi-Fi box off the solar panel, yeah. mobile laptop all out of the back of the truck. I'm playing with the dog at the same time. That's that is the life. Done. Yeah, that's uh, that's good. <laughs> Who wants the V2 handbook? <laughs> Just looks like I've scribbled it out. That's not the intention. <laughs> <laughs> Could be, couldn't it? Looks nice. <laughs> Looking good, a little bit of a redesign on the YouTube channel. It is Thursday at 3 p.m. Sometimes you just gotta take stock and think about what you're doing, see whether it's gonna achieve your goals. The way I realized that we needed to go back to the woods, um, was by saying, asking myself, in a year's time, do I have, do I absolutely have to have built an amazing base here at Brenda's? And do I have to have built the tools for a network to be able to connect on all levels? And the simple answer was, I would love to build a great base here at Brenda's, but I have to build that network. And I know I'm only good at getting one thing done. So I have to optimize everything to make sure that we do that. So. Back to the woods we go. I will see you guys next Thursday, 9 p.m. Take care of yourselves and look after each other.